Good morning. I'm over here on the shady side of the Hermit's Trail, and I'd like to pause for a minute and talk to you about some anime, Glass Fleet from Funimation. Glass Fleet is a new space opera anime series from Funimation, made in a very shoujo style, and highly stylized. Set in an alternate universe, the space opera features swordplay and very Baroque designs. The Baroque architecture inside the spaceships may superficially remind you of the legend of the galactic heroes. Our main characters include Lord Vetti, who's an upstart lord who's in the process of conquering the entire universe. I declare the formation of a new empire that will bring peace to all and unity to the galaxy! And we open with a big space battle in which he takes on some conventional lords and beats the crap out of them. Oh yeah, outer space is sort of greenish. Quaintly, the Baron indicates his surrender by shooting off fireworks in something very naval warfare-like. The second character we meet, and probably the more central to the plot, is Michelle. Michelle Vaubon, representing the People's Army! Michelle is a aristocrat who's rejected his upbringing as a noble and decided to create the People's Liberation Army. I have come to reveal the corruption of your oppressors! Listen, for I speak on your behalf! The androgynous shoujo character designs are ambiguous, but despite being voiced by a female actress, people keep referring to Michelle as he. Michelle is traveling around with a maid, Gilwa, and a butler, Jean so she hasn't entirely abandoned her aristocratic ways. The spaceship she starts off in is rather quaint in that the pilot seat is manned by the maid, Shilwa, and she's sitting on what looks like a Louis XIV chair. The third major character is Cleo. Cleo's a unknown. He comes from outside the existing power structure, but he's going to claim to be of the royal bloodline from the old royal family. My name is Cleo. Cleo of the wind. And he's got a spaceship with special super technology. And it gleams as it flies across the universe and transforms into a heck of a battering ram in the process. And all sides here seem to have the same Renaissance architecture inside their spaceships. Cleo has a small ship of four, more casually dressed. For a grand space opera, these combatants take their rivalry very personally in that they always conduct their combat on, it seems, an individual basis by pulling out their swords. In fact, all three of them are all going to walk in practically unescorted to a small bar on a small out-of-the-way planet where they stopped off. And of course, they're all going to pull out their swords and fight out the control of the universe, mano a mano a mano. Michel, leader, he says, of the People's Liberation Army, decides that Cleo's high-tech ship will definitely be an edge in the fight with Vetti and signs him up as an ally. I found it far too easy to find problems with this series, and uh, overall I didn't like it. I'm really disappointed in the animation that Gonzo has put together. The CGI spaceships look unnatural and move awkwardly, and Cleo's crystal ship is usually little more than a blur. The characters don't seem to really want to fit in with the strange backgrounds, especially when they're in outer space. Also, I'm completely confused on the sci-fi aspects of whether there's air in space or not. I initially thought this strange joust sequence from the opening was meant to be a metaphor, but after watching the DVD, I'm not so sure. In one scene, I've noticed uh, Michelle was out. Somehow leaves a, a wake in the wind that uh, blows her hair. Okay, so it's not hard science fiction. It's meant to be very stylized and very personal in its combat. I imagine these guys will be fighting it out for another 24 or 26 episodes. But Michelle seems dull, shallow, self-centered, and uninteresting. Vetti, a stock conniving villain, and Cleo is so intent on seeming cool and striking poses they seem to have forgotten to give him a real personality. Based on the characters who didn't strike me as all that interesting or cool, 
the basic environment, which didn't strike me as revolutionary, the plot, the scientific aspect, or the animation, uh, this series really struck out on just about every criteria that I'd use to decide to watch it further. So I'm going to give it two stars. If you really like shoujo swordplay fantasies, if you were a big fan of revolutionary girl Utna, for example, then this may be right in your alley. Thanks for listening.